Earth Systems 3209, Unit 3, Earth's Materials. Reference can be found in Chapters 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 6, Chapter 7, Appendix A and B of the Curriculum Guide. Unit 3, Topic 3.1. This topic will discuss igneous rocks and will give you an overview of the terminology and other aspects that deal with igneous rocks. We will focus on describing the terminology associated with igneous rocks and also focus on relating composition, parent rock, texture, and environment to the classification of igneous rocks. Let's first look at the difference between a rock and a mineral. A rock is a consolidated mixture of one or more minerals. Some igneous examples of rocks include granite, which makes up the Earth's continental crust, and basalt, which is the primary rock found in the Earth's oceanic crust. In some cases, a pure mineral may also be classified as a rock. As such, gypsum and also halite would make up rock salt. When we look at a mineral, a mineral must satisfy the following five conditions. It must be naturally occurring, it must be inorganic, it must be a solid, but it must have a definite chemical composition and a definite molecular structure. So if we put these five points together, the definition of a mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic solid with a definite chemical composition and definite molecular structure. When we look at igneous rocks, all igneous rocks basically originate from rock forming minerals. The rock cycle suggests that all rock types originally started as igneous rock, which solidified from magma or molten rock at some point in time. Igneous rocks form from eight minerals, and these are called your rock forming minerals. One of these minerals is olivine, the second is peroxine, third, amphibole, fourth, biotite, fifth, Clays clays feldspar, sixth, north clays feldspar, seventh would be muscovite mica, and eighth would be quartz. These rocks, or igneous rocks, form as a result of eight of these minerals crystallizing at the magma. So if we can look at the four rocks to the left, Four of these minerals make up a composition called mafic. And these are generally high temperature minerals that crystallize out of the magma at very high temperatures, ranging from 800 up to 1200 degrees Celsius. When we look at the minerals on the right, these make up a mineral composition called felsic. And these minerals generally crystallize out of the magma when it gets below 800 degrees down to approximately 600 degrees. When we look at magma and lava, by definition, magma is molten rock that's located within the earth. Magma is very hot and it is buoyant where it rises to the surface and sometimes breaks through the surface and flows onto the surface. If the molten rock flows onto the surface, it is then called lava. So magma would be molten rock located beneath the surface, and lava is molten rock on the surface or near the Earth's surface. Both magma and lava, when solidified, will form igneous rocks. As magma cools, atoms arrange in an orderly crystal structure, and this is known as crystallization. Note to the right, we see different crystal sizes. So if we look at the diagram to the right, where we have a round reddish yellowish area, which represents magma, crystals will tend to form within the magma. These crystals are of varying sizes. The larger crystals, 
are most likely the crystals that form first and they grow as time passes. And the smaller crystals are the newly formed crystals that are forming from the magma at present. Here we can see the result of a solidified igneous rock where we see the light and dark areas which represent different minerals within the rock. And if you could look at this rock under a microscope, you would see the diagram to the right where the different colors would represent the different minerals seen in the rocks. When we look at magma and lava crystallizing, the crystal size will depend on two factors. The first factor is your rate of cooling, and the second factor will be the cooling environment. If we see coarser, larger crystals, this represents an environment where slow cooling had occurred, and it generally forms inside the Earth in a plutonic environment, or what's called an intrusive environment. If we see fine or smaller crystals, this is generally represented by fast cooling rate, and it forms an environment that is on or near the Earth's surface, which we call a volcanic or extrusive environment. So when we classify igneous rocks, an igneous rock is formed when magma and lava cools and solidifies. And we generally classify igneous rocks according to two factors. One characteristic will be its texture, a second will be the mineral composition. When we look at texture, texture describes the appearance of the igneous rock based on size, shape, and arrangement of interlocking crystals. Therefore, the texture depends on how fast or how slow, slow the magma will cool. Mineral composition. Mineral composition is the mineral makeup of the igneous rock and is based upon the chemical composition of the parent magma. So the magma that results from molten rock inside the earth, it depends on the elements or the chemistry that's present in the magma on what composition you will see in the igneous rock. Text references in your book can be seen on pages 61 to 65 dealing with the classification of igneous rocks. Let's first look at texture. Texture depends on the cooling environment. And as mentioned before, we generally see two different environments where molten rock can cool. One environment is called a volcanic or an extrusive environment. In this environment, igneous rocks form at the surface of the Earth. These igneous rocks generally have fine crystals, which form by the cooling of lava, which cools quickly in a matter of minutes, in some cases, to hours, or maybe even days. But relatively speaking, it cools very quickly. Therefore, the quicker the molten rock cools, the smaller the crystals will be. If we look at the diagrams to the right, we see lava represented in the diagram here. If it cools quickly, the resulting crystals will only be very small in nature. And this is referred to as a fine texture. So in review, in volcanic environments, we generally see molten rock called lava. Lava cools relatively quickly, and therefore the resulting uh, mineral or grain size, crystal size, will be small. And we call this a fine texture. In comparison, if we look at a plutonic or intrusive environment, which is an environment beneath the surface of the Earth, which could be kilometers to hundreds of kilometers depth, this environment has magma. And the magma will tend to cool at a slower rate because the rest of the Earth is insulating the magma. So igneous rocks that form beneath the Earth's surface are called plutonic rocks. We generally see large crystals forming deep within the Earth where magmas may take up to tens of thousands or even millions of years to cool and crystallize. Therefore, the slower the molten rock cools, the larger the crystals will be. If we refer to the diagrams to the right, we see 
an area of magma here which cools slowly. As the magma cools slowly, the crystals have lots of time to grow. We're looking at thousands of years or even longer. As a result, these crystals can grow fairly large and we result in a coarse grain texture. So in conclusion, a plutonic or intrusive environment is an environment deep within the earth where we have magma which cools at a very slow rate, therefore giving ample time for crystals to get larger and larger. So it forms a coarse grain texture. If we look at the plutonic environment below, because plutonic environment forms deep within the earth, in order for plutonic rocks to be seen at their surface, they must be uplifted to the surface and the softer rock that surrounds the igneous rock must be eroded away. So in the diagram below, we see a magma body that's located within the earth. When this magma body cools and solidifies, the crystals will be large and they will be located beneath the earth's surface. In order to see this igneous rock at the surface, it must be uplifted as indicated by the arrows. The above rock which surrounds the magma body or the plutonic igneous rock once it solidifies must be eroded away and this will expose the plutonic igneous rock at the surface. One such feature that examples this is El Capitan in Yosemite National Park in California. The diagram to the right shows a large intrusive rock that basically was uplifted and all of the surrounding rock eroded which left the big plutonic rock exposed at the earth's surface. When we look at the composition of igneous rocks, the composition of igneous rocks will depend upon the material, the parent material. That is the material in which the magma forms from. So the composition of igneous rocks depends on the chemical makeup of the parent magma and this is often classified as either mafic or felsic composition. Mafic composition are generally dark in color since they are comprised mostly of dark colored minerals. Some examples of the dark colored minerals include olivine, hornblende and proxy and these minerals are the first to crystallize out of magmas at very high temperatures. Felsic composition, in comparison, are generally light in color since they are comprised mainly of light colored minerals. Examples of light colored minerals include quartz, orthoclase feldspar, and muscovite mica. These minerals generally crystallize out of magma at lower temperatures. So when we look at the magma, and the cooling and crystallizing of magma to form a solid igneous rock. The minerals that result are generally called silicate minerals. And these silicate minerals fall into two mineral groups. They are called dark silicates or light silicates. The dark silicates generally form what we call mafic. And the light silicates generally call the composition we call felsic. So when we compare dark silicates to light silicates, one thing that we know is dark silicates are usually rich in iron and magnesium and they're generally poor or have lesser amounts of silica. Some examples of these minerals include olivine, proxene, amphibole, and biotype mica. In comparison, the lighter silicates include or are rich in elements such as silica, potassium, sodium, and calcium, and are generally poor in iron and magnesium. These include minerals such as quartz, muscovite mica, 
and both feldspars, orthoclase and plagioclase feldspar. When we look at the dark silicates, the dark silicates generally make up the ocean crust. And the lighter silicates are a composition mainly found in the continental crust. So in conclusion, the composition of igneous rocks depend upon the material at which the magma or lava forms from. And igneous rock or compositions can either be mafic, which is rich in magnesium and iron. They are generally dark in color and are very dense and are found in the ocean crust. In comparison, a felsic composition are rich in feldspars and silica. They're generally high in silica. They are lighter and less dense, and they are found in the continental crust. Let's look at some examples of questions from past public exams. Example number one. The following questions read, what is the origin of fine grain igneous rock? When we read the question, the key term here is fine grained. If the igneous rock is fine grained, that means it must have cooled quickly. It did not give the crystals time to grow. Therefore, if it cooled quickly, it must have cooled at Earth's surface. And lava is found upon Earth's surface. So looking at our choices, we see that A reads lava that cooled quickly on Earth's surface. This would be the best answer and is the, question, and is the answer to question number one. The second question of example one reads, which describes the cooling rate and crystal size of magma that cools deep beneath Earth's surface? So if we're looking at the question again, it says, which describes the cooling rate and the crystal size deep beneath the Earth's surface? So if we're looking at magma or molten rock cooling beneath the Earth's surface, it tends to cool much slower. And because it cools much slower, the crystals have more time to form and grow. So they generally result in large crystals. So if we look at our choices, we know that it's deep within the Earth where the magma or molten rock cools slowly. So your choices here would be C or D. And because it cools slowly, the resulting crystals would be large in size. So the answer to this question will be C. The cooling rate will be slow and the crystal size will be large. Example number two. It reads, which rock type will form at location Z in the diagram below? So if we look at the diagram to the right, we see a collision boundary where ocean crust by the key, is subducting beneath continental crust. Where the ocean crust subducts beneath continental crust, we see this is called a convergent boundary. The area indicated by Z, which is denoted in the question, will be deep within the continental crust. Therefore, the resulting rock or magma would cool very slowly, and the crystal size would be large. So if we look at our choices, we see that choice A says chemical sedimentary rock. And we know from the diagram that the rock that results within a continental crust would not be sedimentary, because sedimentary rocks only form on the surface of the Earth. So A and B would not be viable answers. The other two choices, C and D, reads extrusive igneous rock or intrusive igneous rock. Extrusive igneous rock means the igneous rock formed outside of Earth's surface. And intrusive igneous rock 
suggests that the igneous rock formed within or beneath Earth's surface. So our answer to this question will be D. At location Z, the resulting rock type would be an intrusive igneous rock. Your turn. Take the time to complete the following question, and the answer will follow on the following slide. So you can stop the recording now to prepare your answer. The question reads, briefly describe how a geologist would use texture and mineral composition to determine the type of igneous rock. So when we read the question again, it says briefly describe how a geologist would use texture and mineral composition. So these are two th points that you need to refer to in, when you answer your question to determine the type or the class of igneous rock that is found. So when we look at the solution, we see that igneous rocks can be classified according to texture and composition. So if we look at texture first, texture refers to size, shape, arrangement of minerals within an igneous rock and is determined by the environment and the rate at which the molten rock cools. So the faster the cooling, the smaller the crystals. So this can form a glassy or fine texture. And the slower the cooling rate, the larger the crystals. So this generally forms a coarse texture. So when we classify igneous rocks according to texture, we generally refer to the environment. So if it's a if it cools very fast, we know it's a volcanic environment, and we have smaller crystals. These smaller crystals can form a glassy texture or a fine texture. If the cooling rate was slower, we know we have larger crystals. Therefore, we have a coarse texture, which is also called phaneritic texture. When we, rep when we look at the composition, or classifying the igneous rocks according to composition. Composition refers to the mineral makeup of the igneous rock. And minerals in igneous rocks are generally dark in color or light in color. Igneous rocks are classified as mafic, intermediate, and felsic. Each of these three classifications are based on mineral composition and are reflected by the relative color of the igneous rock. So when we look at the composition again, Generally, we see minerals that are either dark in color or light in color. But when we classify igneous rocks, there are three classifications that we can use. Mafic would indicate dark colored minerals. Felsic would indicate light colored minerals. And if we get a mixture of the uh, two, two compositions, the felsic and the mafic, we generally see an intermediate composition. And this will form where two of the different compositions tend to mix. And this is usually at plate boundaries, where we get mafic ocean floor subducting and melting and burning its way up through the felsic continental crust. Then we get the mixing of the felsic and the mafic compositions, which will form intermediate composition that we generally see along mountain ranges, such as the Andes Mountains, where the most common rock would be andesite, named after the Andes Mountains. And andesite is an intermediate rock. So in summary, an overview of the points covered. When we focus on igneous rocks, igneous rock forms from molten rock. And molten rock can be classified as magma if it's beneath the Earth's surface, or lava if it's on the Earth's surface. We also look at the environments in which igneous rocks form. If igneous rocks form beneath the Earth's surface, they are called plutonic or intrusive environments. If igneous rock forms from lava on the Earth's surface, then it's a volcanic or extrusive environment. And the third point covered focuses on composition. The composition of the magmas 
or lavas that are responsible for igneous rocks, forming igneous rocks, are generally dark or mafic in color, where they have high iron and magnesium minerals, or they can be light in color, where they have high silica minerals.